Mike, thanks for joining us again. As you know, the national mission statement says that we exist to advance the cause of Christ in Canada with three things that we're emphasizing, pure hearts, a powerful witness and testimony, and a passionate love for God, the lost and the hurting. And today we're gonna to be uh, focusing on that second P, the power for a powerful witness, powerful living. And it's my great privilege to introduce to you uh, a, a new friend. Uh, we, we got to know each other a little bit by email, uh, about maybe a year or so ago. His name is Remy uh, Jemaili. I think I'm saying that correct. He's from Yugoslavia originally, has a Muslim background, came to faith in Christ, uh, quite an amazing story of uh, God's journey in his life. He now serves as a pastor uh, down the States, and uh, he has written an amazing book that well, I'm sure we'll reference in a few minutes. Uh, but Remy, we're really delighted to have you with us, so welcome. Steve, again, thank you so much for inviting me. This, uh, uh, this is such an honor and privilege. And again, I thank you, Steve, and uh, warm greetings to everyone who's listening. Uh, to this interview, and uh, may the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Mimi, would you tell us a little bit of your own backstory of how you came to understand the person and work of the Holy Spirit and his, the critical nature of, of what it is that he does uh, to advance the, the, the kingdom of God? Thank you, Steve. Again, um, so uh, as, uh, as our friend Steve mentioned, I come from uh, um, a Muslim background, and uh, um, I was born and raised in Yugoslavia. So Yugoslavia went from, um, um, in, 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 there was a civil war and I lost five of my cousins. And after the war, I became very bitter, especially um, regarding to religion, regarding to the idea of God. And I became an atheist, a very devout atheist, uh, went into philosophy and uh, was very much um, advocating atheism and everything that is connected with that so however <laughs> what happened is that uh, um i had a professor who was a missionary there and who uh, for the first time um witnessed jesus christ to me and so the idea of christianity began to emerge in a new way and I've encountered not too long, two years, it took me, I would say two years or something in our friendship. And then I made a bold, the boldest, I would say, um, yet simple, uh, but the boldest question ever and asked Jesus for, for a sign at, at a very desperate time of my life, very suicidal. Anyway, so, and, and the Lord revealed to uh, himself to me in a supernatural way for like I would say three seconds and uh, everything that I knew everything that I, I however my my background my uh, uh, everything that I was brought in from and, and it just got cracked cracked and my life began new and there I encountered the Holy Spirit for the first time his love his power his redemption and, and it was nothing like I I never experienced anything like that in my entire life. It was so good that it, it was like, is this even true? And uh, the revelation of Jesus, because I was from a Muslim background again. Uh, and so revelation of Jesus, even though I did not know about the Bible, the Holy Spirit revealed to me at least the elementary things of Christianity. And I felt the joy, the peace, the power of God for the first time. And I felt also dirty inside. So I felt a need to go and, and ask God for forgiveness. I did not know. Uh, why I was doing things, and I I, I went home, and I, and I got to, down to my knee, in my knees, and I prayed, and I wept for an hour or two, and and uh, I just felt the amazing power of the Spirit. I felt a new person. I was introduced in my early, uh, that evening, it was evening, I was introduced to the Christian God, who is a God uh, that lives, a God that was able to change anything, a God of the impossibles, a God that is able to change my wicked nature and make it a nature that is in the line with saints of God, a God who makes things that uh, naturally cannot uh, uh, ch be changed, transformed uh, into a new nature, heart that was of a stone to be a flesh. And so 
uh, there was my encounter and I and my faith in this God because of the experiences uh, increased tremendously and there I was introduced to the kingdom of God and uh, uh, to the power of the spirit that is a catalyst for every believer that unlocks all secrets of the kingdom of God that enables believers to become children of God, understanding the depth of the of, of, of God and being able to live a lifestyle that he called us. That's, that's an amazing thing that you've just shared with us. Um, Remy, I know that um, after your initial encounter with God's Holy Spirit and uh, you eventually ended up in England, and uh, you did your PhD work, I believe, there. Yes. And while you were there, you did some research, which I found fascinating in, in your book called The Supernatural and the Circuit Riders. I think you you read like 30 or 40 of the journals of the circuit riders in America in the 1700s, 1800s. Uh, can you tell us uh, some of the, the things that you began noticing in their ministry, like how the connection to signs and wonders and miracles, and how important were those things to the advancing of the kingdom of God through the circuit riders? Because I haven't read anybody else that's written on this topic. So I'm going to shut up and <laughs> just sh share with us what you were discovering and how important it was to the work of the circuit riders. As the circuit riders who were the early Wesleyan ministers, the early Methodist ministers or whatever you want to call them, uh, um, were uh, uh, walking in a an anointing that was similar as in the Pentecost, in the days of Pentecost. And so uh, when uh, investi investigating their ministry, I have... I have um, come to realization that circuit riders um, uh, were uh, their, their supernatural or divine encounters can be categorized in two major groups, the private and the public. Now, you cannot give what you don't have. That's the first thing, okay? And so what happened is that the circuit riders, first of all, were, enca were encountering through Wesley, who became a catalyst, a, 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 a um, a very important figure spreading uh, of this revival and and through Wesley's preaching they um, will become uh, in, they will encounter personally the holy spirit in a new way not through religious programs or, or or traditional things those may help the brain to a degree but many times leaves us as pharisees uh, but what happened with the circuit riders is through various dreams, trances, uh, hearing the spirit, whether in the or, or or in their in their spirits or audibly. Uh, um, he and and witnessing healings, witnessing bizarre we encounters with change, shift in the weather, and just uh, just amazing things slain in the spirit and different kind of encounters. So first of all, they were introduced personally to this God who is able to change uh, lives. And they were uneducated. They were much more uneducated than, uh, um, than we are today. But so now, because they received this power, the Holy Spirit then called them different ways, dreams, voices, etc. These people were not educated they didn't have churches they were in america they store without churches they were following not a program or a formula but the spirits anointing and leading these people anointed by the spirit went out to share what they received they became a bridge of heaven so that heaven can shine through them and so they became a, a this bridge that God then would pour out signs and wonders. Remember, people, they became so famous, not because they were excellent speakers, but because they were uh, presenting a living God that can change lives. They would draw, they're not dry, they will ride horses and, and, and they were families will go gather in these so-called camp meetings to see the power of God being manifested. And these people, simple language, simple-minded, wearing 
same clothes as as uh, ordinary people nothing to be distinct uh, from others not, not they were people ordinary people but with a supernatural anointing and through them signs and wonders will come like the uh, if i can mention any there was like any uh, there were had many many but i would say that in usually in their meetings it was very very common the signs and wonders will be experienced like being slain in the spirit and the enthusiastic emotional uh, expressions which were shouts weeping jerking dancing uh, howling sometimes too they would have dreams visions trances a lot of exorcisms okay healings various healings uh, healings can be inside healing soul emotional or whatever but they can be also physical healings is a, it's a, a, a big list there the raising of the dead mm, that's a good one <laughs> and divine weather shifts sometimes there would be circuit riders revivalists uh, who would stay stand in the stage and they would start speaking a little bit the holy spirit will be poured out the entire uh, the, the entire public will be slain in the spirit will stay like that with ours will right will stand up all of them converted how important is to see these signs and wonders in america it's it's crucial today in america north america or canada or anyway in europe is getting sick so you can talk as much as you want but if you and i if, if, if I, all of us don't have something to demonstrate then people may not listen to us as much but if we walk in the same anointing with signs and wonders we allow god to become uh, uh evident in their lives remember apostle paul would say to the corinthians I, I i came in weakness he says i came in weakness and i came but i came with demonstration of signs and wonders so that your faith will not be uh, only in mere human knowledge or understanding education which that has this place I'm not saying that but in the power of god because he wanted to connect them with God directly instead of human reasoning. That has its place. Uh, however, people today need a similar encounter as the holy, as, as the sacred writers used to uh, demonstrate. They need a manifestation, a visible manifestation. We cannot change people with our programs we cannot change them the holy spirit can change people a lot of the church have forgotten the power that changes people it is not a program it is not a building it is the holy spirit yeah as a direct result of of what was happening in, in your book you make mention of the hundreds of churches that were that were started hundreds of thousands of people that were coming to faith in jesus christ uh, may god do it again uh, remy just for uh, as we start to, to bring this to a conclusion um for those of us who are watching if we wanted to lean more heavily into the personal work of the holy spirit how do we start like wh where do we begin uh if if those that are watching want, want to lean more heavily into, into this amazing work of god's holy spirit begin with prayer fasting and develop your childlike faith these are very crucial they're so simple but they are so crucial and important prayer starts a kindling relationship with god in a new way and uh, sometimes we need to push to go deeper in fasting if we have blockage remember that jesus even himself says to the uh, disciples he says this kind of demon cannot leave unless you're going deeper and fasting Cer there's certain blockages that can only be uh, overcome in, in prayer and fasting and then develop a lifestyle of faith then we ought to begin seeking heaven more in faith because the currency of heaven it's not education necessary it is the amount of faith that we anticipate to see in heaven 
So uh, we ought to think as Jesus would think. If the disciples could not, uh, Jesus rebuked disciples could not cast out a demon because of their small amount of faith imagine how how what's our our our, our faith today imagine that um why in the early church why did the revivalists start being sincere with yourself with ourselves why did those people if god is the same yesterday today and forever why is our Christianity different from theirs? How come murderers were becoming saints in those days and today they just stay murderers? How come people say, well, I have this kind of struggle and nothing can help, medication is not helping me this, therefore God must, make, must have made me like this to live in lifestyle, this kind of lifestyle. But the scripture says, no, it's not that. How? Uh, What's the matter? What's the matter? So the Christianity that we're preaching, the Christianity that uh, um, is supposed to be lived is different. So we have to be sincere and recognize that there is a gap missing. How can we get closer to heaven? What is lacking today? And let's begin to be hungry. Hunger, whoever is hungry will be fed. Whoever knocks, doors will be open. Ask, and we shall receive. So these, these are small um, yet simple um, advice, but, uh, but they are so crucial to all of us today. In, and we ought to incorporate supernatural things uh, in our lives. Start small. If you have a headache or something, pray for it. Pray for it. Start practicing what the scriptures say. He came to heal the sick, set the captives free. These verses are so powerful, but we don't see them. And because of that, a lot of people who are in prison are lacking. Uh, they need to be delivered. They're in bondage. And so, but the church is not reflecting it. So let's start small. Let's start by practicing small encounters in our lives. Get out of your comfort zone. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's not about uh, um, anyone. It's about Jesus. Get out from our comfort zone and in faith, ask someone who see that, that someone that is sick and say, "Can I pray for you?" Well, I don't believe in healing. It's okay. I do believe myself. You know, I had this struggle, and and the Lord healed me. And I tell you, I have done that so many times. Whether people were healed or not, they always thank me. Almost always. <laughs> but uh, yes, yeah, start small, start seeing others. And in that way, your anointing will increase. Okay? It starts, uh, uh, you have to start somewhere. It is like uh, if you don't sharpen your knife, your knife becomes dull and it's useless. But we start sharpening those knives, sharpening the gifts of the Spirit. Long for the gifts of the Spirit. They are for the church. Long for them. Uh, have a zeal. If you don't long for them, ask God to give you a zeal. Be deeper. Go deeper. Anyway, I'm going to... Uh, I'm, I feel like I'm going to be preaching a sermon here, but anyway, I'm going to stop there. <laughs> this is not just something that you've read about. This is something that you personally are leaning into. So if you had one last opportunity to say something to the folks that are watching, uh, I know that you've pastored and I know that you're planting a church right now. You're meeting in the gym of a school. And, yes. and right now you are praying for, for God to work miraculously. But maybe mm -hmm. just end by telling maybe just a recent something that's happened uh, through the, your asking god to reveal himself and power in, in your ministry will will that will let that be the, the last thing that we talk about i think that god is stripping away the old ways of doing church i think that we ought to let go of control we ought to let go even of our education our plans and we ought to uh, seek first god i think god knows what people around us need more than we think that we know and i think that uh, if we uh, um, as the sacred writers in the early church are connected directly to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will reveal to us the things that people need around us. Uh, the Holy Spirit uh, just asks us to be obedient to Him and He does the rest. It is so amazing and it's so 
there's not so much burden and exhaustion and stress when we allow him to operate under us through us i'm sorry through us under him and through us so uh, but yes just recently uh, we've seen actually uh, the, a person who was who was um, diagnosed with cancer he was he was um, released from the hospital and they said that his, his days are over and um, so they, they just sent him home just to say bye to his family and we went the, the uh, I know the the um, I know him well and he used to support me when I was a missionary so I I, I, I went to see him and I invited two or three other uh, teenagers with me because I wanted to, for them to see what God can do and I wanted them to see and to witness a, a supernatural healing because I know that maybe my words they will forget but I know that if they witness something uh, supernatural they will never forget um, and so and we went and we prayed like two hours or three hours and the man was supernaturally healed it was just amazing and, and brilliant to see and 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 um, excellent excellent man and i've seen uh, um, uh, many miracles signs and wonders seen slain the spirit uh, cancers healed uh, exorcism different kind of things and guess what i am hungry for more i want more i want more and more because the more you taste god is so good the more you taste the more you want and the more you have, the more fulfilled you are. And it's just never ending journey. So I'm very excited about the future too. Well, thank you so very, very much. Thanks for watching. Those of you who've been tuned in, uh, both pastors and, and lay people, uh, as, as you know, we're having three or four videos about the pure hearts, three or four videos about the power of God's Holy Spirit for powerful witnessing and living, and three or four interviews about uh, a passionate love for God, the lost and the hurting. So God bless you. See you again soon.